Appearing in the premiere episode of the Netflix speculative astrobiology series Alien Worlds, the planet Atlas is a hot young world supporting a thriving biosphere of predominantly predatorial creatures. The planet is a wet terrestrial, 32% larger than Earth and approximately twice as massive, giving it a mean density of 4.83 grams per cubic centimeter. The film states several times that Atlas's surface gravity is twice that of Earth's, specifically 2.09 g, but this is incorrect, as a surface gravity calculation using the quoted mass and size values instead gives the planet a gravitational acceleration of just 1.16 g. Atlas's atmosphere is reported to be nearly five and a half times denser than Earth's, allowing for much of its native flora and fauna to float in the air similar to the way fish float in the ocean. This subjects its surface-dwelling life forms to a sea-level atmospheric pressure estimated to be around 4.65 times that of Earth. Atlas's atmospheric composition is never stated, but the color of its atmosphere as shown in the film suggests that it is comprised predominantly of nitrogen and carbon dioxide. It presumably also contains a significant percentage of diatomic oxygen and water vapor, but such a quantity of greenhouse gases would likely be problematic for a planet that already receives a lot of heat from its sun. Atlas is reported to orbit its parent star at a distance of 1.4 astronomical units, with an orbital period of 598 days, or 744.4 local days given the planet's 19.28 hour synodic rotation period. At this distance, Atlas receives approximately 12% more energy from its sun than Earth does, and with this information, we can calculate the luminosity of Atlas's parent star to be approximately 2.2 times that of our sun. This is consistent with the star's reported F spectral type and makes it likely to be a spectral type F7 white main sequence star. Atlas's orbital distance and period place the star's mass at only 1.02 solar masses, which is unusually low for an F-type star, but not completely outside the range of possibility. This gives it an estimated radius of 1.28 solar radii and an estimated effective temperature of approximately 6,200 Kelvin. Atlas has no moons, but is orbited by a complex ring system similar to that of Saturn. Given the bright appearance of its rings, it is safe to conclude that, like those of Saturn, they are comprised primarily of ices. However, this is highly unlikely given that Atlas orbits on the warm side of its star's habitable zone, where ices are not stable at even year-length timescales. The particles that make up the rings would quickly sublimate in the high irradiance of the system's sun and be carried away by the star's strong stellar winds. Rocky rings would be able to survive the high irradiance, but would likewise suffer from stellar wind erosion, likely not lasting beyond a few centuries. Additionally, rocky rings are not bright like the rings shown in the film, and depending on their particle size and density, would either appear as a dark band across the planet's disk, like those of Uranus, or might only be visible at infrared wavelengths, like those of Jupiter and Neptune. From the visuals shown in the film, it is difficult to tell whether Atlas has equatorial rings and a high obliquity, or a more typical obliquity with high inclination rings. This latter scenario is problematic, as high inclination rings are unstable. This is because planets are not perfect spheres and tend to bulge out along their equators due to their rotation. This causes the rings to feel a stronger gravitational pull when crossing the equatorial plane and alter their orbital paths as a result. This has the effect of distorting the rings and pulling them down into a low inclination over time. Therefore, the planet having a high obliquity, or axial tilt, is the more likely scenario but this poses problems for Atlas's climate and ecosystem. At some point in its orbit, which we will call its summer solstice for lack of a more appropriate term, its northern rotational axis will face the star, and that hemisphere will be in constant sunlight, while the southern hemisphere will face away from the star and be in constant darkness. This will cause temperatures in the northern hemisphere to soar, especially near the pole, and cause temperatures in the southern hemisphere to plummet uniformly. This alignment will slowly change over a period of approximately 149.5 Earth days until reaching the planet's autumn equinox, where its equatorial plane will face the star and both hemispheres will receive equal sunlight. 
During this period, the planet will also have a normal day-night cycle. This would then change over a period of 186.1 local days until reaching the planet's winter solstice where the southern hemisphere burns in sunlight and the northern hemisphere freezes in the dark. It would then transition back to a day-night cycle at its vernal equinox before returning to its summer solstice to begin the cycle all over again. Given these extreme seasonal temperature variations, it is likely that Atlas's lifeforms would remain near the planet's equator, migrating north and south as the weather permits and demands. The main concern is whether Atlas's climate can sustain such extreme annual temperature variations over such long periods without destabilizing and turning the planet into either a frozen snowball or a searing greenhouse. However, upon reflection, I realize it is also possible that Atlas has both a low obliquity and equatorial rings, and it is simply the camera that is rotated 90 degrees for dramatic effect. But who can say for certain? It is reported that Atlas experiences a higher frequency of meteor impacts than Earth does. The film claims that this is due to the planet's higher gravity, but this claim is incorrect. Gravity is a negligible factor governing the frequency of meteoric collisions. It is the number of asteroids that cross the planet's path that determines how frequently it will be struck. It is far more likely that Atlas's higher incidence of collisions is due to an asteroid belt lying adjacent to its orbit, or even the recent passage of a nearby star disrupting the system's Oort cloud and sending debris into the inner region. There could be even more explanations for this, but not knowing anything about the rest of the planetary system makes it difficult to speculate further. So how does Atlas measure up as a speculative planet? The planet's high mass and mean density are both very accurate and match what we would expect from a planet that size. However, I am still going to have to fault it due to its creators miscalculating its surface gravity by such a high degree, and then basing so much of the planet's ecology on that erroneous value. Actually, I should instead say that they overestimated the planet's gravity as I'm not convinced that they even attempted a calculation. Zero points. The orbital parameters of Atlas are fairly realistic, assuming that the star's abnormally low mass is accurate. I like that the day length was quoted to two digits of precision, I just wish that the orbital period would have been given the same level of detail. Plus one point. I feel like the creators of Atlas built the planet's atmosphere with a singular goal of making it dense enough and heavy enough for large life forms to float through the sky, and didn't think about what effect such an atmosphere would have on the planet's climate. If they had simply placed Atlas further from its star, then they could have easily kept this atmosphere and had its high concentration of greenhouse gases working to keep the planet habitable rather than threatening to turn the planet into a pressure cooker. Likewise, the planet's seemingly high obliquity creates seasonal temperature and illumination extremes that could potentially destabilize its climate. I give them kudos for creativity, but negative one point for realism. Atlas not having a major moon, or any moon for that matter, is quite realistic and makes it a prime example of a typical terrestrial planet. However, having icy rings in the habitable zone is not realistic, and if they are in fact high inclination rings, then they are even more unrealistic. Negative one point. As usual, there is essentially zero data given for the parent star but they gave enough information for the planet that the star's mass and luminosity could be calculated. The star's mass is a bit lower than what we would expect from an F-type main sequence star, but it's not necessarily unrealistic. I will begrudgingly give it the point. With a total of zero points, the planet Atlas from Alien Worlds receives an E grade. Such a score is to be expected from a campy science fiction series or video game, but I find it to be a somewhat disappointing score for a planet coming from a series that is supposed to be educational and scientific. But there is no time to dwell on it. It's a big universe and I have more planets to explore. I hope to see you at my next alien destination.